Lawal Hatib is the former energy minister of Iraq, and he joins me now live from Baghdad. Lawal, we're happy to have you on our show today, but we also want to extend our deep condolences to you for the loss of your brother to COVID, as well as the loss of the dozens of people who died in that fire a week ago in the COVID isolation unit at Al Hussein Hospital. It's clear that your country has faced tragedy on top of tragedy, hasn't it? Thank you, Michelle, for hosting me. Indeed, it's a tragic to witness uh, family members, relatives, friends, and uh, so many people we know that die on day to day, not because necessarily for the pandemic and the um, 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 terminal illness, but because of the mismanagement and the corruption that engulfing the whole, the whole uh, healthcare system in Iraq. Uh, this, this sector is, is, is badly run since the regime change. Uh, in fact, the whole political class uh, should be held accountable and they should have um, declared uh, um, the health issue in Iraq as a, as a public emergency and to give it a, a priority since day one. Um, in, in any established uh, um, uh, healthcare system uh, uh, in, in developed countries, uh, usually, the uh, healthcare sector enjoys around 20% plus of, of the GDP of, of such countries. Uh, on the contrary, in Iraq, um, public spending is hardly uh, touching or reaching 4% uh, of national budget, which, explain, and, and mm -hmm. which is then chopped by corruption and mismanagement, which explains why um, hospitals have turned into death chambers. and. Uh, people, um, the public, have very uh, little confidence in, in ill-trained and ill-equipped uh, establishment. Uh, this needs a serious attention or else we are moving more and more into bigger problem than what we have witnessed uh, in, in recent uh, months. And you see those numbers, and that really puts this into perspective, that in all of Iraq, there are only 250 hospitals, and the need is 10 times that amount. So in the face of this, how have the healthcare workers there been able to compensate? I'm quite sure it's already challenging for health workers. Uh, there are good doctors and good nurses that are trying to do their best. The problem is that there's bad planning and the corruption and mismanagement. One of the big jokes and big lies in Iraq we have is the intensive care units. That intensive care units, once you are in it, that's it, you are declared dead. You're just waiting your death certificate. Uh, the thing is that th this sector needs a complete revision, complete international, inter it needs com uh, international intervention and supervision. It should be taken out of the hand of the, any political parties or interferences, or else uh, we, we, we are witnessing a, a tragedy bigger than the war on terror that we have witnessed in the recent years. All right, and we know that the power situation is a problem unto itself, but then you have COVID along with that, and that becomes a deadly problem then. So you were energy minister. Was is there any way you could see some improvement or anything that could be done um, to take care of that problem and, and, and tell us what you were up against? Well, during my tenure, that was a very um, short term. It was 12 months uh, of executive authority, then followed by six months or five months of uh, caretaker uh, responsibility. Uh, we were like hardly uh, being able to uh, deliver the full program of four years. But again, this is talk of the past. The problem in Iraq is not so much the technical aspect of it, but very much the, the, the policy vacuum the, 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 and the leadership vacuum. Uh, this sector is split between two port ministerial portfolios, and that's the petroleum and electricity. Uh, and. Uh, uh, it, had, it was uh, allocated to so many ministers. Just in the past 17, 18 years, I think about at least 20 ministers uh, came to run the, uh, those two portfolios. This is a recipe for, for disaster. Uh, the, the only solution to resolve this is, uh, is to choose uh, some sort of energy czar, well recognized by the international community, uh, enjoy some level of leadership and, 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 and policy understanding to run the show with zero interferences from ignorant political class and ignorant uh, media that, key, uh, that are uh, doing nothing basically but uh, spreading misinformation 
and hindering any, any progress. This is a serious issue. Iraq, Iraq energy sector uh, sh should uh, witness serious and radical economic reforms, including the tariff reform, uh, corporatization of state-owned companies, uh, serious engagement with viable and well-recognized uh, private sector. Uh, the technical aspects of it is one, is one important element, but one, only one element in a long list. So without addressing all these issues, it's going to be quite difficult to create an, a stable, viable energy sector and, securing, and, and basically providing the energy security to be the backbone for the economy and the political uh, standing of, of, of the country to, uh, to basically to act properly, to, uh, to operate properly, let alone uh, uh, surviving the energy transition that the whole world is, is witnessing because of so many changes due to climate change uh, mm. uh, dynamics. And speaking of leadership, we have elections coming up in October, but we've also seen protests across the country. How do you see this situation affecting the outcome of the elections? Well, uh, uh, public resentment and, pro and protests, uh, it's not something new. Uh, they've been, uh, protesters been on the street uh, uh, for the last 11 years, and uh, they will continue to protest uh, to seek uh, a better Iraq, a, 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 a better, better future uh, for themselves, and they have the right. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the political class really need to understand uh, that there are priorities and we need to act fast and smart as soon as possible to do real reform and not to kind of like continuing doing more of the same. Because doing more of the same will lead us to, uh, to, 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 to uh, early bankruptcy and much more financial uh, challenges, and which, which, which means threatening uh, uh, security and, and, and the social fabric and, 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 and the future of the country uh, as whole. So it's not a matter of like exercising a democratic election uh, um, uh, on paper, but these need to be uh, the democratic rights and, 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 and economic reform, political reform, social reform, all these need to be acted upon uh, uh, with, with serious national agenda. Um, uh, before it's too little, too late. Uh, the next, um, I, I wrote this uh, to the World Bank prior my uh, um, uh, prior my appointment uh, uh, to um, to, the, to this government job uh, back in 2018. Uh, that um, two countries in the Middle East uh, will will witness serious uh, uh, crisis in, in in the short term, and this is Iraq and, and Lebanon. If they don't resolve. Uh, the, the political crisis and, 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 re and reform the economy and the energy sector specifically. Luai Al-Khatib, thank you for bringing that perspective to us to bring these issues to light.